In our previous sneak peek of our level design concepts, I tease parts of the settlement castle. I talk about my thought process on how I made our levels and some level design techniques that I use in making them. So in today's devlog, let's continue our level design journey and talk about the safe hub for this level, which is the ruined church. So safe hubs will be a place where Cassandra, our companion, will be staying. And one of the safe hubs in this area is the ruined church. I decided for it to be a church since there will be instances that Cassandra will uncover lore from reading books that are left within the ruins. And most of these books are found in archives in churches, like this ruined church that we will be making. These books will serve as a storytelling mechanism for us to relay to the players the lore of the place. So here I'm currently designing the landscape around the church. I want to have multiple access to the church with several paths to go to. One of the paths is this area that I'm making that will lead us to the lower sections of the ruins. I started by putting down stairs to serve as a guide for me to terraform the terrain to match the slopes of the stairs. Basically, I just put down the stairs prefab and fill it with terrain, then slowly sculpt the terrain to match the slope of the stairs. Then I polish it with some grass foliage and some textures to the terrain. So I started with textures and I made a path that connects the stairs. This will indicate that this path is often used due to grass not growing on the path that's been walked on. I added a mix of dirt path textures and some rocky path textures. These textures will also serve as a guide for me to put the grass foliage on. Here, I added the grass following the dirt and rock textures as my guide. I only put the grass on the green textures and leave the pathway of dirt and rocks clear. I added a mix of different grass prefabs and some flowers. Basically, I want to put a lot of grass on the sides to direct the player's attention to the center path. This will help the player where to move, since the path in the center is clear and can easily be seen. Instinctively, players tend to follow clear paths, so this design technique is very helpful if you want to guide the player to certain areas of your level. Now let's test what we've made. So this is the path going down to the lower part of the ruins. And the time of day is around noon time. So let's go back up and see and check if the path is clear. So yeah, it seems to be clear and the player can easily navigate it. Now let's test it during night time. So this is during midnight with, with a clear sky. And still, even though it's dark, the players can still see the pathway. Now let's test the area during a foggy night. So here, even though it's very dark and foggy, and with just our torch on, the path is pretty clear for us players to see. Making clear pathway really helps with navigation. Now let's test going downwards. It's very visible, especially when you have fog that helps enhance the depth of the area. And another path that I made is a path that leads us to the castle. I laid down some low walls, I made a path, and added foliage and texture to the terrain. These walls will serve as a boundary to the graveyard. I also added some details using this tree and additional grass, and this ruined house along the way. Let's tour this path towards the castle. There we can see the castle from afar, and the time of day for this scene is around late afternoon. On the right, we can see the graveyard walls. And here we have the tree that we added and the ruined house. Beyond the house, we can see a clear open area. I'll be adding more ruins here in the future. Ruins just like this house here. More ruins will be added to this level soon, and will be placed at the lower part of the city ruins. 
These ruined houses will serve as shelter for mercenaries. They camp here after they're done with their jobs. Basically, the ruins is one of the main settlements for the mercenaries. And over here, this is a path that will lead us to another gate entrance of the castle. The area is not yet detailed. As you can see, there's no foliage grass yet. I'll be adding grass to this path in the future. Now let's head back and see the area from a different perspective. The lighting during the afternoon is warm and cozy, and it goes well with the red and green tone of the foliage. It really captures the mood of a warm afternoon. Alright, now let's test this area at night time when it's foggy. Let's follow the path towards the castle and observe what we see. As what I've mentioned before, having fog at night time really helps create depth in the level. Even though it's dark, you will clearly see the pathway in front of you because of the silhouette the fog and the terrain creates. Also, far away within the castle, you will see the pillar of fire that will always remind us where our bearings are, and will remind us always of our goal. This pillar of fire can be seen all throughout the ruins level and serves as a guide for the player to help them know their location. So if you tend to get lost, just look for the pillar of fire and you'll surely know your bearings. Now let's head back and see the foggy night from a different perspective. I'll be adding more lighting to the area in the future. We'll be adding torches all around the ruins to make it more alive and inhabited. You want to tell a story that this place is a home to mercenaries and they camp these areas after their work during the day. Alright, the church looks good at night, with all this fog creeping, enhancing the mood of an eerie cold dark night. Next, I started making the graveyard. First, I terraformed the land to make some elevations on the corners of the grave. I want it higher than the level of the church so that I can emphasize a point of interest that I will be placing in the area, which is this structure, a mausoleum. Then I added some props, like this stone coffin and some gravestones. Then I buried them by terraforming the land. Then I added another mausoleum on the other side of the graveyard. These mausoleums will serve as access ways to a lower level of the graveyard, which is the crypt. Then I added details to the mausoleum and added pathways that connects the mausoleum to the church. Then added more props and lastly added foliage grass and trees. Now let's have a walk and test this part of the level. So from the church, when you turn to the right, you'll see a path to the lower graveyard. And just ahead, on our right, we'll find the upper mausoleum. I plan to make this structure an entry point to the upper courtyard. Then here, you'll see the second mausoleum, which is an access point to the crypt. Both these access points can only be opened from the other side. And you need to explore the crypt to gain access to them. Now let's test nighttime. The nighttime looks good, but the graveyard is too dark. I do plan on adding new enemy types to the grave and crypt areas, called grave robbers. And they bring with them lamps or torches that will help light up the dark. There's also other parts of the graveyard, which is the upper courtyard, but I still haven't made it yet. I'd definitely make a devlog once I start making that level. If you're interested, feel free to subscribe to get updated. The last part that I made is the entrance to this area, which is the sewers level. The sewers will be accessed from the clay pits that are near the quarry. This sewer system is interconnected all around the city ruins and will serve as a safe passage for players to pass with minimal threats. This also serves as a shortcut that will cut the travel time from the places you're exploring to the church where Cassandra is located. This sewer system will connect to multiple entrances to the crypt level, which is under the church, and will exit several exit points above ground. 
One of the exit points is this area. This area loops back to Cassandra, who is stationed at the church researching lore on books from the archives of the church. By the way, I already did our first playtest with some friends and I've already gathered feedback and bug reports from them. And I'm currently fixing them for the next combat demo. If you're interested in playing a demo of the game, join us on Discord and apply as a playtester. We'll be having our Discord combat demo soon. Also, if you want to help Wisplite, we're already live on Steam and wishlisting the game will really help us with marketing. I would like to thank my patrons for supporting the funding of the game. And if you guys would like to help out with the development financially, I'll leave a link to our Patreon page below. All funds will be used in acquiring assets for the game. For our next devlog, let's continue our level design journey and explore some parts of the castle. Till next time.